Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. And let's bring in Paul Alexander. Join us for a few minutes. One of my favorite people on the planet, sir. Great to have you with us. And by the way, a belated happy birthday to your beautiful wife. Oh, well, thank you for all of that, except for that uh, <laughs> that radio replay. I guess it was a TV replay. Uh, that'll yeah. haunt Penguin fans for a long time because, uh, you know, the future with the, you know, the three longest tenured teammates in NHL history uh, with Crosby, mm-hmm. Monk, and, and Latang. Uh, no word on whether or not, uh, you know, that the band's going to be kept together. Um, so that was a tough one. Um you know, the NHL, as much as I love hockey, and I do love hockey, I really don't like the NHL very much. Um, if they would just act like the most uh, prominent and powerful sports league in the world, my apologies to all those soccer you know, configurations, the NFL yeah. gets it. They protect their stars. Um, yeah. You know, hits to the hit became a problem. They were eliminated. They were fined heavily, and they basically, you know, disappeared. And then... You hit Tom Brady with a low hit, all of a sudden that's a penalty and that's fineable and that's going to protect your quarterbacks even more. You hit Sidney Crosby in the head as much as you would like or you elbow, you know, Jake Gensel. It's not even penalized, let alone, you know, found to be something that could be, you know, a suspended offense or anything of the such. So if you look at this series, there's a lot of things you can break down. Goaltending mismatch was ridiculous when you have uh, oh, the uh, Adamable yeah. Louis Domingue <laughs> going against yeah. uh, Shesterk, and that, that's just not fair on any on any track. But still, if the NHL would have just taken care of business and you have Sidney Crosby for, you know, uh, a longer period of time, if you have him in games five and six, yeah. I think it's very much uh, a Penguin series to advance to the second round. Well, not only that, but Miller last night, I mean, he took a clear shot to Crosby's head around yeah. the goal, and you know the shot I'm talking about. Exactly. I mean, that Okay, that's the kind of thing that is a penalty, and if you're looking to protect the game, especially on national TV, you make that call, and they didn't make the call. And, Cros- you know, and of course, Crosby never complains. No, I mean, he used to. He learned the hard way. In fact, uh, it was the great Edzo that we heard on the call. You know, he was Sid's first NHL head coach, and, and Edzo was very stern and very strict with him about, you got to quit crying. Uh, officiating is only going to get worse the more you mouth off. So Edzo was very, very strong on that end of things, and I think that, that helped quite a bit. But here's what's ironic. The only time the NHL cares about head injuries is when your helmet comes off. Yeah. You have to immediately skate to the bench, which is <laughs> – Probably one of the more ridiculous things, you know. The, the NHL could be very ridiculous. That that stands out as something very, very ridiculous. Yeah, and it happened, and it. And Marino played a really good series. Now he's not the one that had to skate off. Pedersen did, but Marino yeah, but played Pedersen, a really and good he series. Played pretty strong as well. Yeah, he, you know, but last yes, last night was not one of them. Uh, nope. they, neither not. neither one of them, especially Marino, for some odd reason didn't play well because I thought Jari played great. He did for coming, you know, a broken foot. Now, we don't know what bone it was or, you know, if it was any kind of, you know, weight-bearing right. bone or whatever it was, but he didn't play, you know, for a good bit of time and wasn't even on skates. He, he had his leg in a boot for the first three or four days of the injury. So, yeah, to be in that state of conditioning, that state of uh, rustiness, he was not the problem. And, and actually, goaltending wasn't the problem either. It really wasn't. No. I mean, it was no. a mismatch, certainly, but when you have a three games to one lead, with or without Sid, you just kind of find a way to scratch out one more win. And you had leads yeah. in every game. You had leads in all three of the games that you needed to get that fourth win. You find a way. And the Penguins have been very stubborn and somewhat arrogant in that um, they think the league will adjust to them, Steve. And yeah. the playoffs are going to be a lot more physical. Things aren't going to be called. Playoffs aren't going to, you know, you know power plays aren't going to determine the outcome. So they just continue like this is now the fourth straight year where they think the league's going to change. And they've been eliminated in the first round for four straight years because the league is not going to change. No, it's now in not. 16 and 17, they were the fastest team in the NHL. You can't hit what you can't catch. They're yeah. not that team anymore. And they have zero physicality. Zero. 
They're a soft uh, team. And you take yeah. Newman out of the mix, which was really a, a huge factor. Yeah, I agree. They're really pretty lame on the on the blue line. I mean, they have talent in, in Latang and Mathis and great skating, but they don't have any toughness. They don't have any, you know, guys that if you you know if you put your head down for a second, you're going to pay for it. They don't have those guys. You need them in the postseason. If you're going to guess now, the old uh, Bill Walsh saying when he was talking to Randy Cross, said, I think you've got five more years left in the league, but only two of them are really good. I only want the really good ones. They're kind of at that point with Malkin, uh, Latang, and then to a point, Rust, who's 30. How do you think it plays out? It's going to be very interesting. I think Rust is going to get money that uh, the Penguins aren't going to match, and that'll be unfortunate because he's he's a gamer. I mean, he is a big-time clutch performer, and I think he had a fantastic year that's going to earn him the money the, the Penguins can't afford. I think Geno will take a significant di- uh, discount. He's already said many times, I have more than enough money. He's not one of those guys that's going to go to the highest bidder. Latang right. is still that guy. The quarterback's your, your power play is the absolute defender uh, on the penalty kill and will put up minutes that will blow your mind, 28 to 30 minutes every game. Yeah. If someone offers him three or four years at a pretty big number, he's going to probably go, tank. and it probably will be Montreal, his hometown. Yeah. And guess what? They got the cash to do him. it. I don't play him. He doesn't know the Penguins a discount. No, and and, and Montreal de- is desperate, Paul. They need they need to get they need to get some credibility back with their fans, along with the first overall pick in the draft. Yeah, and I think you know Chris brings that, and he is such a great great human being, the, the hardest worker you'll ever find. Yes, he infuriates you with some of the chances that he takes, some of the the giveaways, but he more than makes up. You know, for that, with all the positive impact that he has. Well, you just described yourself, great human being and a positive impact. <laughs> uh, my friend, it's always a pleasure. Well, Steve, uh, it is a great pleasure to be with you. Uh, you know, I, my son Sam is actually going to be a cheerleader for the Nittany Lions next year, so hopefully that. I'll be up for a lot more games. I can't wait to see you, and great congrats stuff, to right? Sam. That's awesome, <laughs> isn't it? It's great. It is. I can't wait. Steve, thanks so much. Always a pleasure.